Hi guys, Coach Joe Michel, Performance One Advanced Sports Training. In part two of our, our, our talk about core exercises that help benefit weightlifters, it doesn't always have to be a flexion exercise, like a crunch or a sit up. What we like to see is kind of three main areas. One is gonna be some type of brace. So whether you're standing and bracing, you're sitting and bracing, you're, you're bent over and bracing, in a plank position bracing, something that where you're bracing your abdominal muscles along with your lower back muscles, okay? Then we always like to do some type of anti-rotational or rotation. Why? Because we spend so much time in this frontal plane that we do need to kind of balance that out with muscles on the sides of the stomach to counterbalance that motion. Last one we like to do is some type of complex that involves not only the abdominals and the lower back themselves in an isolated movement, but also bring in other muscles, whether it be the psoas, whether it be the hip flexors, whether it be the glutes, or be some other movement that combines and works synergistically with that core. And we'll talk about that in a second. So the first movement we like to talk about is a plank, a weighted plank. One of our athletes here is Lindsay Parizo. She's gonna demonstrate a weighted plank. Now planks in general, people kind of do them a little wrong. They'll just kind of like just sit there and with an, and, you know, in a position and not truly engage their core. One thing that we like to do here is you wanna think that you're trying to pull your hips or pull your belly button up. You're trying to do like a little contraction of that stomach and flex your stomach. We always use the expression like, brace like I'm gonna punch you in the stomach. But you're not gonna just stick your belly out and go and like, let me punch you. You're gonna tighten up. Well, that tightening up is kind of a compressing down of that abdomen and that's what we want her to do. So Lindsay's gonna get on the floor. First, we're gonna get her in position and make sure she's in that. So, a lot of different variations. Our most basic is she's gonna be on her elbows. Her elbows are gonna be at about a 90 degree angle. Again, she's feeling that contraction or that bracing like I'm about to punch her in the stomach. And then again, we will use this for time. When we get to a more added resistance, we'll take about a 15 kilo plate. We're gonna place it not on the back of her upper body because from a mechanical advantage, that's actually, she can support a lot of weight. The lower I bring this weight on her back, the more now it's gonna stress her her lower, her, her abdomen. So again, she's feeling that she's contracting. We're placing this plate in that lower area and then we would start the clock. One thing we tell a lot of our athletes is I want to say, Lindsay, I want to keep your head in neutral position. I don't want it to be all the way up. I don't want it to be all the way down. So from her spine all the way out, she's the same. Also, I'm going to tell her to say, Lindsay, I want you to take very slow and long, deep breaths through only your nose. And I wonder when she's exhaling, really feel that extra little bit of air going out as she's contracting, okay? When you start doing that, it's now gonna work those intercostal muscles in her stomach and up through her diaphragm a lot more than if she just were just sitting there and she's mouth breathing and blah, 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 blah. We don't want that. So she's now getting in that position. She has the resistance on her back and then we would set for a particular time. Average is gonna be anywhere, whoa, you all right? <laughs> Someone's been skipping and rolling. So again, we would, allow the athlete to be there for a certain time. We would let them either have the clock or as a coach, we would hold the clock. So there's two different ways. The coach would then either remove the plate from the athlete's back or the athlete would just kind of go to her knees and just kind of let it slip off to the side. It's a bumper way. Just make sure she doesn't let it land on top of her and we're all good to go, okay? So that was the one exercise, like I said, we use and we use a lot. Again, you don't have to get crazy with this exercise and put 100 kilos on your back, but you do want to have this exercise, again, in your arsenal as an Olympic weightlifter. Okay, because again, we want to work on something that's working on those bracing muscles. Again, but the way we taught it is again, you're starting in that flex position and you're taking the time to nasally breathe, slow, long inhales and extremely long and slow exhales. Okay, 30 seconds is gonna feel like 10 minutes. So we can get accomplished more in a shorter period of time. Some people are like, oh, I can plank for five minutes. They don't really do anything. I was like, well, you're probably, probably not doing them right. Because this exercise, as Lindsay can kind of contest by her look on her face, that after about 30 seconds, you know, she's kind of spent, okay? Somebody's gotta work on her abs. No, I'm just kidding, we'll talk about that later. But those are the things that we like to see, okay? Anywhere between three up to five sets, anywhere from 30 seconds up to about a minute. Again, if you get to a minute pretty regularly, you may wanna go from a 15 kilo plate up to a 20 or even up to a 40 or 50 kilos total, okay? But again, not making it so that you're extremely fatigued in your abdomen, especially if you have to go do squats a day or two from now, and now you can't maintain position in other exercises because your core is so fatigued. That's why keeping core, we want to touch on it, but we want to keep the overall volume of the movements low.
So another exercise that we like to use in our arsenal for core development for Olympic weightlifters is some type of rotation or anti-rotational movement. And there's a ton of different variations out there, but we're just gonna talk about a couple of the basics that we use here. Okay, one of them is gonna be an isometric hold in a perpendicular fashion with some type of band. You could use a cable that we have over here, but we like to try to pick a band. And it could be anywhere from, a, from an easy band up to very intense okay, band. That could be anywhere between 50 to 80 pounds worth of resistance. The keys are the same and very similar to how we showed in our planking position that it's a brace. Okay, and we're just picking a different angle of that brace. So instead of the force being directly on top of us and us pushing back in a prone position on a plank, now the resistance is coming from a side angle, okay? And now we're resisting that movement. So I'm gonna tell Lindy to get into an athletic position. So her feet are gonna be slightly outside of her hip width. Her balance is gonna be midfoot to back into her heels. She's gonna take a step out so that she starts this, this band in a tense position and the band is gonna be at the midline of her body. It's not gonna be in her face. It's not gonna be down by her knees. It's gonna be right about where her belly button is, okay? and she's gonna be out, and she's gonna hold this position for time. Again, she's breathing, slow and controlled. She's bracing like someone would punch her, okay? Slow and controlled through her nose and extreme longer exhales that I really want her to focus on when she does this. And we don't want it to move around from her body. So we do that anywhere from, again, from anywhere between 20 seconds up to about a minute, depending on the athlete. And then we would rotate around and do it to the other side. Another variation of this movement that we would use with some of our weightlifters, as they're in that position, we're thinking it off as a clock position, she's now gonna take this, this band and she's gonna rotate her body slightly to the left and then back, okay? Now by adding that rotation, we're working those muscles a little bit different, okay? She's still in this anti-rotational movement because it wants to slingshot her back, so she's doing it slow out and slow back. Not only she's gonna feel this in her abdomen, but she's also gonna start feeling it in her lower back. Why? Because it's one to pull her over to the side. She's pulling with not only those oblique muscles, but into that spinal erector as well. They're rotating her around in her position. She's gonna do that again, anywhere between 15 up to 25 repetitions. Could you go more? Yes, but it's not really our need because again, we don't want to over fatigue these muscles because we're doing so much other bracing movements when she's doing Olympic lifting. Some of the more advanced movements we would do with some of our athletes, Lindsay would get in the same position. She'd get in that isometric position. She'd hold it, and then as a coach, I would now tell her, don't let me move you, okay? And now she's having to fight that resistance where she's not letting me pull her in either direction. So she's fighting against the band, but now she's fighting against me pushing her in position. So not only we're engaging that core, but now she, her feet, her toes, her shoulders have to be engaged. And we would use this fighting drill in the same amount of fashion. Sometimes it just adds that variation to an athlete who's just tired of just doing this for a minute. They're like, oh my God, this is so boring. It's like, boom, boom, boom. You're moving at two, three inches. They're like, oh my goodness. And it's those micro adjustments that they have to make that now adds to that dimension of that core development that we want to use. Third grouping of core exercises that we like to do for our Olympic weightlifters. One involves, like I said, a complex. And usually that complex is going to be something from a hanging position or a decline position. But I like the hanging position in particular. So what Lindsay would, is gonna do here for us is gonna be a hanging knees to chest. We like this movement for several reasons. Not only that it's gonna be a core exercise, but it's also gonna be working other things. The main thing that I like to use it for weightlifters for is a decompression of their spine. Even though it may be slight, I like them hanging from an apparatus. And Lindsay's gonna climb up into this pull-up bar. Where her grip is doesn't really matter. It's more gonna be for comfort for her. So she's getting that initial stretch and that traction of her spine, which is huge. I think especially after heavy squat days or every heavy pull days, I wanna see that. From there, she's gonna slowly bring her knees up to her chest, slightly past her belly button, and then she's gonna bring her legs down. Now she's focusing on her toes being in front of her, okay? And this will minimize the swinging. She's gonna pull her knees up, hold, and then she's gonna lower them slow back to the ground. Yes, there's people that do toes to bar, but we don't need that excessive hip flexion that is gonna burn out her hips that you would see in CrossFit or something else. That's a great exercise, but it's a completely different exercise. We're looking for her bracing through the stomach. She's gonna give it another go. She's gonna brace through her stomach as she's slowly bringing her knees up, and then she's slowly coming down. Again, I'm looking for the traction of her shoulders, because we do a lot of shoulder-related exercises, the traction, of her lower back, 
in the meantime, we're getting that ab abdomen, okay? And we're getting that hip flexor psoas tie-in. Thank you very much. Okay, again, and this range could be in that 15 up to 30 even rep range, okay? It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, an exercise that you do all the time, okay, to a complete burnout that you're like, man, I felt it in my hip flexors. Or, again, going all the way up to toes to bar, okay? Because we don't want to make it a purely hip flexor exercise. But when you're pausing at different positions and then rotating um, the hip angle, we're going to get the cameraman to kind of come over to the side. Up, 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 roll them, roll them, roll them. And then she's going to come down. It's that rolling of her hips up one more time. She's going to roll her hips up and then she slowly brings them down. That's gonna truly get that engagement in there. We're just not doing this, okay? Or they are allowing an excessive swing like you would get in a, in, a, in a toes to bar. Again, completely different exercise. I don't want it to be completely about her lat activation and everything else. I want it to be a decompression of the shoulders, a decompression of the spine, along with her working that stomach, working that, that, that so as, so that, hip flexor tie-in, but not excessive. I don't want it to ex be excessive in one area more than the other. And then there's variations, one leg, side to side, rotation. They're all advanced, more advanced movements. I just like doing this. Sometimes we'll use this as a warm-up too when our athletes are gonna come in that gym. Say, hey, just give me three sets of 15. Right before we get going and doing stuff, though, elongate the spine, get the body and core moving around, stretch out the shoulders a little bit, through a passive range of motion. I'm a big fan. So again, we had our plank that we're a big fan of, using weight or not, but the, the fact that we're compressing and, 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 and flexing through the stomach and nasally breathing through. So they should take you anywhere between the three to four count inhale to a three to four count exhale when you're doing that movement, okay? You don't have to get crazy in terms of the length of time on it. You can be very effective with 30 to 40 seconds with that. Then we had the rotation and anti-rotation with the band. Again, looking at that range of motion that that athlete is going to have. We're adding, again, another bracing movement, but now on a different plane. Then we can add a little bit of motion in it. We can add a little bit of a hand fighting in there as well to give that athlete a little other sense of dynamic resistance. And then we had some type of complex, okay, where her whole body is now being stressed, that the abs have to work in conjunction with another area of her body, okay, with her hip flexors, with her psoas, with something else. Oh, by the way, we're getting a, a decompression factor in there as well. Very beneficial to weightlifters. Are there a thousand different core exercises you can do? Yes. These are a couple of the ones, the basic ones that we use with our weightlifters. Hope you like them. Send us some questions that you would like to see us talk.